to go meet a loads of women who have been sentenced to life without parole. In this prison, there are more than 40 women who have been told they'll be inside until they die. Okay. Oh, yeah. This will be fun. Women at the well worship is being held in a sacred place at seven. But this is no ordinary prison. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Taste of choice. Oh, yeah. you. They're mentally unwell, and you're a convicted murderer. Yeah. And they trust you with this. Yeah. Here they are trying a radical way of dealing with female prisoners. Sex doesn't happen, yeah, but we would prefer that it didn't. Some have just arrived. This is just a nightmare. I mean, there's not going to be some big confession after 20 years because I know what I didn't do. And I didn't kill my husband. Some have been here for decades. I told you <laughs> there was hope and miracles that happened, didn't I? For me, I've always been sort of genuinely fascinated in terms of how you cope when someone said, that's it, we're taking your freedom away from you forever. So, yeah, keen to know what life is like after life. You stabbed a woman over 20 times who was trying to help you. Mm -hmm. A decent woman. How do you live with yourself after doing something like that? Hi, Cheryl. Hi. I'm Stacey. Cheryl. You're in charge, I'm told. I am. I'm the warden. Are you happy to show me around? I sure will. Right, I'm following you. So right here we have the master control center, which operates all the cameras and the doors. I've come to investigate one of the most radical prisons in America. There are more than 700 women here, from drunk drivers to violent murderers. Three years ago, Cheryl Darn took over and came up with a new regime. She had one goal, devise the best way of dealing with female prisoners. You act like a daughter, why you always put me on fucking black like that? So this is what we would call general population yard. We don't house according to their custody level. And here we house according to their behavior. So if you're doing well, you have all the freedom of movement that you want. Hi. Hello. Taking our tour walk. So this prison has pet dogs. So what's the story? You, the dogs stay in a certain part of the prison and then they, you're allowed to take them out for a walk? They stay in our rooms with us, in, ke in kennels in our rooms. And we take care of them. That's such a treat for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therapy. Therapy dogs. That's so, so cool. cool. What's your name? Josette. How old are you now? I'm 40. 41. I came when I was 22. You look good for your age, by Thank the way. You. That's what we call it, prison preserve. <laughs> no cigarettes, no drugs. How long have you got left? I have the rest of my life here. You're a lifer mm -hmm. without parole? Yep. What did you do, Jose? I um, was in a carjacking type of situation, and I shot a Chinese man, and he died. It wasn't my intention, but that's what happened, so I have to pay the price. That's the breaks. There's no sense of bitching about it. Let's just take it a day at a time. It's easy. It's just easy. You wake up like, oh, thank God I'm alive. For centuries, American prisons were designed and run only with men in mind. Like Cheryl doesn't do things like that. This prison does feel very progressive. You have this idea of what prison life is like in modern America. And you imagine, you know, discipline is at the forefront of everything. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. But Cheryl doesn't believe that that approach works. When you say, you know, you're going to go and spend some time in a prison and meet lifers, this is not what you imagine. 
They've got freedom. There's no curfew. They've got makeup. They're allowed to use the phone whenever they want. They've got pet chihuahuas. There will be some people, they will think this is totally unjust. They shouldn't be allowed to live a life like this inside. And I would say the key word is inside. When you step out of this, you'll see the fence and the razor wire. No matter how comfortable, no matter how pretty this place is, at the end of the day, it's still prison. Hey, she's got the right idea. I'm not the only person adjusting to life in Cheryl's prison. Just right now to see. Five days ago, 47-year-old Barbara Parza started her life sentence. She was convicted of first-degree murder for drugging her husband and then setting the house on fire. The court heard that she had recently taken out a $200,000 life insurance policy on her husband. Okay, we'll go into stall number one. These are your clothes for here. Okay, they're standing with your name on them. I want to know how you cope knowing this is going to be your home for the rest of your life. Oh, Hello. Barbara. Hi. I'm Stacy. Hi. How do you do? Thank you. Barbara, how are you doing today? Still on my first week here, so it's hard to adjust. And it's crazy out there, so there's a lot of loud, obnoxious people that I'm not used to. Tell me about your first day here. Um, it was overwhelming. There was a lot of emotion. Just, I guess, the finale of it. Really thought I'd get to go home. All right, and left hand will do the palms. Lost my life. I've lost my career. I've lost my children. So for complete clarity, Barbara, you're saying you didn't poison him and you didn't set the house on fire. No, I didn't. All right, so I'll have you come over here and you're going to stand in front of the camera. All right. Are you sat here thinking, maybe I will get out, or do you accept that you may die here? Um, I still have an appeal process. So that's what you're holding on to right now? Yeah. So if you don't have hope, then you don't have anything. When the women first come here, they've been sentenced to life without parole. How long does it take them to oh, man, accept years. what's happened? So five, Barbara, for example, five, she seems completely bewildered and in total denial. Yeah, I don't think her or anybody within the first five years understand Gee, many Christmas, this is where I'm at. Mm. How could they? Do you think Barbara will cope in here? Do you think she'll survive? I think she has to survive. Right, there's no alternative. Yeah. I've been in loads of prisons all over the world, and this one feels strangely calm. It can be easy to forget the awful crimes that put the women in here. Oh my gosh, taste of choice. How cute. That's awesome. Particularly when everyone treats this place like home. I got Olivia. Yay. Thank you. We're painting this morning, Tatiana. Yeah it up a bit. It just gives me something to do. This is like very soothing and relaxing. I just put my music on and I just, you know, I just zone out. Tatiana Dixon was convicted of first degree murder at 20. Now 37, she's a trusted prisoner. Does it ever get overwhelming in here? I wouldn't say overwhelming, but like I'm bipolar. So sometimes I just get super depressed. Sometimes I just don't want to deal with people. And there's nowhere you can really go yeah. in here to be alone <laughs> but the shower, you know? That's the only time I can really be alone if I need to cry or just need to vent because there's just people always around and they just watch you. 
This is your seventeenth year. Why are you in it? Listen, can we do this in the room? Like, yeah, of so course. I can get well, the yeah. this type because yeah. I want to I want to give you honest answers, yeah. but I don't want to be Let's distracted about people. Totally. Yeah. All right, right. Cool. How tidy you are. Yeah, very tidy. I was selling drugs to support myself, and on this particular night, the victim she asked me to borrow a particular CD, Jay Z Blueprint, and I told her no because she don't return things. I say 15 minutes later, I realized the CD was gone. So I went to her apartment, and she grabbed a knife, start charging towards me. So I'm like, what the fuck? I told her next time you threaten me, I suggest you kill me. Now. There's a landing of stairs, and I'm looking over, and I hear her going off. And then I remember her, like, charging up the stairs. The last thing I remember is me pointing the gun, shot her, shot her again. I guess I shot her four times, they say. Do you think about the life no, you've taken so every day? I did for, like, the first maybe seven years. Yeah. I started to put things that were traumatic way, way back. And that's things that happen with my mom, that's things that happen in foster care, that's things. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Life outside, it was rough. Yeah. This is easy. <laughs> this is easy for me. This is easy. Statistic from birth. Since then I've been cursed And just when I think you can't get Oh yeah, it gets worse But I try not to think about it Every night yet I dream about it If it won't for the grace of God I know where I'd be Each and every morning when I wake up And I take a look in the mirror Cause I realize everything I'm capable of And I threw it away They tell me I'm serving the rest of my life Cause I made a tragic mistake For exchanging a robbery Life for a life, yeah, I understand Shouldn't have did what I did Now I gotta deal with this Cause I'm on my own all right. Ty, that is good. Thank you. Oh, my God, that is good. Thank you. That is good. Wow. True talent. Yeah. I think a common thread here for many of the women is trauma. So, so many of these females have experienced violence of some description, physical violence, sexual violence, you know, drug abuse just very difficult paths up until now and that's not excusing their crimes in any way but it's certainly worth acknowledging the prison estimates that more than three quarters of inmates suffered physical or sexual violence before they ended up here Josette Williams had been in care and was high on drugs when in her early 20s she murdered a man in a carjacking. It sounds quite ruthless. Yeah. It sounds quite heartless. It, it does. That's what happened, though. We were on drugs. When you're on drugs, your mind's not right. What were you on? Oh, we were smoking marijuana, um, ecstasy pills, all that. Just drinking, just doing whatever. You know, that's what we did. But this whole 18 years, mm. it's like really changed me. Like in many prisons, most of the inmates here earn a small amount of money doing jobs. But what I find strange about this place is that a violent murderer like Josette Williams is trusted to work in the mental health unit. What did she say to you when she came to the door? It's time to eat, though. So it's tuna. Every five minutes, we have to check on them and write down a little note. Like, basically, she's just waiting for lunch. Every five minutes. Because even though there's a camera in the cell, the staff aren't always at the desk to see what's going on. I mean, that's... A real sort of genuine responsibility for you. Yeah. And mentally unwell. Mm -hmm. And you're a convicted murderer. Yeah. And they trust you with this. Yeah. 
it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You have someone's like life literally in your hands. You have to like be on it with certain people. The good thing about having someone like Josette in that position is they don't take advantage of her because she does have credibility here at the yeah. at the facilities. Would you trust her with your family members? Well, yeah, around them, absolutely. You would. Mm -hmm. Your kids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's made her mistakes. They're horrible mistakes. There's no excuse for them. She's paying um, with her life sentence, but I don't think she's a dangerous person now, like she was at one time. Do you feel jealous of those that aren't like this? Mm-mm. Absolutely not. I'm just mad at myself, like, dang, why couldn't I do something petty? You know, I did, why did I have to do something that big to get myself for the rest of my life in here? Josette and Tatiana, they will die in prison. Yeah. I'm sure their victims are thinking, and they should. For me, when I look at them, they've changed so much. They came in hell on wheels. And when I see them for the women they are today, I like them. They're good people. I'm sure both of them would say if they could change it, they would. But they can't. You can't turn back that. This prison has transformed Tatiana Dixon and Josette Williams, but it's taken years. And like many young lifers, they started off fighting the system. They spent their fair share of time locked up in here. Segregation. Seg is the toughest punishment in the prison. You only get an hour a day outside your cell. Seg is the last place I would want to end up. 22-year-old Cheyenne Harris is less than a year into her life sentence. What are you looking at? I want to know why she's struggling. Why have they moved you up to this ward? Uh, because I got into my first altercation. A physical fight? Yeah. Why? This girl... She made a comment that was directed directly towards my ki my charge and why I'm here. And yeah, I turned around and beat the shit out of her. What did she say that made you so angry? Um, she said, "Yeah, bitch, that's why you killed your son." Did you kill your son? courts clearly thought that you were responsible. If I hadn't been high on meth, I wouldn't, it never would have happened. I was not a good person when I was on meth and trying to be a mom. I wasn't. He was extremely neglected. Where did you find him? In his room in his swing. How long was he left alone for? Um, I can't say exactly sure how long he was left alone for. I think it was days. Yeah. It was days before I went in there. You're clearly, um, struggling mentally. Do you imagine this is how you will go on to exist? I don't know. Other people here say that, that it gets better, that it won't be so hard. But in all reality, I think that's bullshit. Shouldn't you hurt for the rest of your life? Yeah, but I'll live. Do you want to live? Depends on the day. Harris's crime is one of the most horrific things I've ever heard, and it's going to haunt her. In prison, not all murderers are equal. Child killers are considered the lowest of the low, but she's going to have to find a way to cope.
So to you, love God. It's to you. So I say, Judy, open your eyes and see. Let your vision soak in the wonder and beauty all around you and know that it is the reflection of your soul's own inner splendor. Open your eyes to the limitless goodness that is. Love God. Judy White was convicted of first degree murder in 1979. This prison has been her home for more than 40 years. What's the hardest thing I've been? Being away from my children. That's the worst. How many children do you have in total? I have five children, 11 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. And you were what age when you came to prison? 33. Were you working? What did you do for a living? I had foster babies. I had over 100 foster babies. You were a foster mum? Yes. And now you're sat in prison serving life? Yeah. What did you do? Why are you here? My friend and I were sitting around her kitchen table, and she just like, oh, God, I just wish Aidy was dead. And we, I was laughing, and I was like, because um, I said, well, this crazy man that came to our house last night, I said, he'd probably do something like that for $50. They took that, and they hired that man to kill her husband. Were you physically there at the time? No, no. But you were instrumental when you knew what was going to happen. I knew that they had plan was planning to kill him, yes. And I didn't do anything to stop it. So therefore, they say I'm just as guilty as, as the person who shot him. Do you think your sentence was justified? Yes, I should do time in prison, absolutely. I don't think I should have went free, no. But I don't know that I should have got a life sentence because I, I didn't kill him, mm. you know. How long do you think would have been acceptable? Well, I don't know, maybe 25 years, you know. There must be days, Judy, when you're just like, how did this happen? Like, how am I here serving life without parole? When Prior to this, you'd never been in trouble? No, I didn't even have a speeding ticket or anything. No. Okay. Barbara Parza had also never been in trouble before. You'll get through it. Doing time is all about how you choose to do it. She's been given a mentor to help her settle in. I got you. Okay. Like all the new prisoners, she will spend the first month of her sentence living under restricted conditions. I'm going to catch up with Barbara. I'm going to go and see Barbara. Oh, okay. Thank you. Did you sleep? Did you manage to sleep last night? Yeah, um, I take a medicine to help me sleep, so uh, that probably a half hour after I take it, I'm goodbye for a while. Seems to do the trick. Yeah. Am I right to come in? Yeah. Oh, I'll be quiet yeah. because this lady's sleeping. Yeah, she sleeps all the time, so we're okay. All right. So which one's your bed? Oh, the bottom bunk is mine. Here's pictures of your kids. Yep. Last time we spoke, you hadn't heard from your kids. I haven't tried to call them yet either. They can block me on the phone. I'm going to write a letter, ask for their forgiveness, and to be their mom again. And that's all I can do. When you say that you're going to ask for forgiveness, uh -huh. you still maintain yes. you're innocent in terms of the crime that you've been convicted of. Yes, this is just a nightmare. I mean, there's not going to be some big confession after 20 years because I know what I didn't do. And I didn't kill my husband. And if it doesn't get resolved, I guess I'll just, you know, I have to accept this is going to be my life. You're not a lifer. Two years. I'm not a lifer. I don't oh. know what that feels like. In I can only out. imagine. I can only imagine. I don't know how I would handle coming here knowing I'm never going to leave. It's a whole different... You know, perceptive. Which is what you're trying to navigate your way through at the minute. Right. And it's hard listening to, you know, the girls saying, I've got 25 years and I'll do a year or, or know that they're going to go home. Lots of lifers here seem to be quite religious and they believe they're going to heaven. Yeah. Well, Which feels slightly odd to me. No, because you have to repent your sins and ask for forgiveness, and God's going to forgive you of anything. Oh, yeah? Even murder? Even though it's one of the Ten Commandments, um, as long as you repent um, your sins, you know, it's never too late. Do you think you're going to heaven? 
if you don't think I'm going to heaven, that's your opinion. Um, it's what's between me and God. And nobody can judge that relationship. Before Barbara Parza and other new prisoners move into the wider prison, Cheryl lets them know what's in store for them. Expectations that I have. Just because it's a prison doesn't mean that you have to act like you're in prison, if that makes any sense. You're here, some of you, for life, but hold yourself high. Just because you're in here in a blue scrub does not mean you're any less than me. Let's see. Sex. Sex happens in prison, but it is not, it is a rule that you're not supposed to have sex. You can't hold hands, you can't kiss, nothing like that. Does it happen? Yeah, but we would prefer that it didn't. Before I got here, when people were caught, meaning we walked in on them, they were handcuffed, walked over to segregation. We started talking about that a little bit because sex is not against the law out on the streets. I had a hard time with people getting handcuffed after they were caught because I don't want women to feel dirty about their bodies or about what they do. And so it's important that we also respect that. Cheryl wants to treat the women as grown-ups, but sex is the main disciplinary problem in the prison. Officers patrol the rooms every half hour. Two women have just been caught in bed together. No, no, tomorrow. Maya Williams is a counsellor. I want to find out what is allowed between prisoners. When you catch them in the act, what happens? Now that we're being more gender responsive, um, we try to do things a little bit differently. If it's a male officer, he'll kind of step away and say, get your clothes on and, and you need to come out. If, if it was mutual, we let them know that this is not appropriate. We're talking about this before, you remember? I know that. And this is not supposed to be happening. We understand that women are relationship driven. So as much as we think like we're doing everything to stop it, it's very, very, very hard. Oh, it's very complicated. It is very complicated, yes. Well, women have needs. Yeah, oh, yes, and they're, yeah, well, relationship driven. Are there dildos in here, or is it just like oral? No, they do everything. You would be amazed. They make those, they and make as much- They make dildos? They make them, yes. Out of what? I think before they've used oatmeal. Um, oatmeal? Yeah, and, and I think they cook it or something. One lady said that they would use hot dogs, so you, you had to be careful with, you know, with them bringing the hot dogs back and putting them. So they come up with some things. Oatmeal, I've never heard that before on hot dogs. Yeah. Mia. I can see why I haven't been cut off from the outside world. Many women seek out relationships inside. Judy White was married with children when she was convicted of first-degree murder. Hi, Pops. How are you? Good. Then she met Helena Burrell, better known as Pops, who is also serving life for murder. And somehow they've managed to keep a relationship going for more than 30 years. Nice. You two have been together longer than I've been alive. It's a long time, honey. Yeah, I suppose. Was it love at first sight? Yeah, it was for me, not for her, I don't think that was for yeah. me. Why did you fall for Pop so quickly? I don't know. She is bored, just... been in prison. No, nope, sir. That isn't true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like the way you look. Yeah, we're, we're really best friends, because, I mean, I trust her with everything. Yeah. So when people say something now, I say we're companions. The relationship changes over the years. You prioritize different things. Well, are you awake today? Are you alive today? Great. <laughs> Hi, honey. It's less about the sex and more about checking if you're alive. Yeah. I guess to survive a life sentence, you need relationships. Whether it's inside or outside prison. Barbara Parza is trying to work out what to say to her children. She hasn't spoken to them since she was convicted of murdering their father. My dearest Kate, I finally arrived at the facility and doing okay. I've got your pictures hung around my bed. And now when I see your smile, I remind myself of your hurt and feelings. When we spoke the last time, she told me kind of where I failed as a mother. And she says she's happy now because I'm not in her life. 
but you know she hugged me before I left so I really think there's a potential there to rebuild I have to have faith in that you know it's so hard being 16 anyway right yeah when you have both parents around right and now she has neither parents right. around. I kept telling her Kate I'm trying to be the person that you need me to be and she just kept saying you can't do that because you're not going to be here I would do anything to be there. And that's the part of this that kills me inside. I'm not there for my kids. I think it's slowly dawning on Barbara Parza that when she murdered her husband, she gave up the chance to be a mother to her children. Today is a big day because it's visitors day and um, I would say there is a buzz about the place, you know, there's a queue for the showers, uh, the girls are putting their lippy on, the hair dryers are going. Look, look at me, you've got it on your tooth. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Thank you. Visitors day is complicated for Tatiana Dixon. She's serving life for first degree murder. But her longtime partner, Kristen, was released from prison two years ago. Most prisons wouldn't allow them to see each other again. But Cheryl allows Kristen to visit twice a year. How did you two get together in here? She was um, a tutor up in education, but I was always shy around her. I don't know why. And I would tell my friends all the time, I'm going to get her. She's just so smart. I like smart people. And she's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Have you always liked women? Yes. Has she? No, I'm the first mood. Does Cheryl allow you to embrace? Yeah. Uh, we get to before, before the visit and after the visit. Are you allowed to snog? Yes. Got a couple of months worth locked inside you. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. What but. does your future together look like realistically? What it looks like is what we have every day. We talk every day. But as far as what the future future holds, I can't predict. I understand the severity of the situation. I have life. She has a life. All right. Happy? Yep. You look smart. How long do you get with Kristen? All day. You do? Yep. Thank you. Have you got butterflies? Yeah. Oh. Nothing nicer is there than going to see a special person. You look nice. Hi. I'm Stacey. Yeah, likewise. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you, Kristen. I feel like I'm meeting the Queen. I really do. You're illegal. How am I illegal? You're supposed to have it down to your knees. What's my knees? Your shirt. But that's okay. We're still going to let you in. Oh, I didn't know. You're too, you're looking too cute, man. You can't be like It's a shirt and pants. Are you serious? It's a shirt. It's a shirt, and then you just stretch me. Okay. I think you will really split people. <laughs> I think some people will think you recognize that these women are human beings as well as offenders. Other people will say you're too soft on these women. Mm -hmm. Prison is too comfortable. They've got all of these privileges that the victims' families might not want them to have. Oh, I think there will be people that will look at me and think, you need to experience what we experience. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Yeah, I, I like... do too. And what would you say if they said they're not suffering, they're not hurting in the same way that we are? <laughs> Correct, they aren't. They're still alive. And my job is to keep them safe. 
and make this place a humane place while they're still on earth. But at the end of the day, there's times that I think, I question myself, am I doing the right thing? In Cheryl's prison, good behavior permits the lifers to live out their days in relative comfort. But for one lifer, good behavior is far more important because it means she could get out. Ruth Ann, I'm Stacey. I'm Ruth Ann. How'd you do? Good. Very nice to see you. Yeah, likewise. Ruth Ann Veal committed first degree murder at the age of just 14. Sentenced to life without parole, she's grown up in prison. I was so young and I had to learn to fend for myself and I knew that people were intimidated by my size and I knew I could fight and I knew that I was going to die so it didn't matter about following the rules so good being good wasn't going to get me out of prison it didn't matter so what number is yours three are you happy to talk about your crime I talk about it now but before I wouldn't talk about it because I didn't come to terms with what I had done Will you tell me what you did? I was on the run. I ran away from the group home I was at in Quakerdale. And I just walked up to the house. And I knocked on the door. And Catherine Haynes, she answered the door. And she said, you can come in. And I asked if I could use the phone. And she let me use the phone and everything. She was nice to me. She gave me orange juice, everything. And I seen the knife. And so I grabbed the knife. And I just was trying to get her upstairs so I could get her car keys. And I, I just panicked. I just wanted the car keys, and then I just didn't want to get locked up or go back home, and I just freaked out, and I started stabbing her. You're 14. Yeah. And you stabbed her to death. Mm-hmm. How many times did you stab her? They said I stabbed her 23 times, but I don't even remember that. I mean, some women are in here, Ruth Ann, because they were attacked. They would say it was self-defense. You stabbed a woman over 20 times who was trying to help you. Mm -hmm. A decent woman. How do you live with yourself after doing something like that? Being who I am today, I would never do that. But it just breaks my heart because I know her daughter hurt so bad. You know, nobody wants to know that their mom died that way, you know? I don't want to do about it. <laughs> Ruthann Veal's crime was brutal, her behavior in prison poor, but now at 41, she might have a second chance. We are en route to the community center. Yes. And it's only your second ever shift here. Yes. It's just completely different for you, isn't it? Yes. I got to feel like I was free for a little bit. The Supreme Court has ruled it's inhumane to deny the opportunity of parole to juvenile criminals. Thank you. To get out, Ruth Ann must convince the parole board she's changed. Hello. How are you this morning? Good, how are you? Good. Ruth Ann, she stabbed someone to death over 20 times. Is she still a threat? Could she kill someone else? Well, study.